Hey, hello. Am I live? It seems so. All right. That's that's great. I'm not sure if I don't if you cannot hear my me twice because I'm checking out my Twitch page uh, to see if I'm live. Uh, let me just quickly notify people since nobody's here yet. So okay, live now on Twitch. All right, seems that yeah, the notification worked. Um, all right, let's let's code something. Uh, let's let's do something interesting. So, Cypress actually had an update recently. So that's that's some exciting news. And uh, what I want to do here today is to explore that and to see, and to actually see what's new and if there's anything interesting. And um, yeah, so as as per usual, I am going to I am going to look for the I'm going to use my application, which is kind of the Trello. Trello app. All right. Uh, yeah, it's a Trello clone application, and you can find it on my GitHub. So philipreis.com slash GitHub, you'll get redirected to my GitHub page, and you can check it out there. It's pretty simple. You just npm install and then npm start. So what I will do now is I'll make this little bigger so it's easier to read and good and I'm going to type npm start to make sure that it is still working because it's been a while since I have actually opened it I am working on a new version which is using single file components it's using TypeScript and Vite and uh, view three and all of I don't know cool technologies that I'm trying to uh, work out and uh, figure out and uh, yeah you can actually find that on my github as well so let's see okay the page seems to be working on local host 3000 let's see it's here all right okay so we got that. Now I got my Cypress JSON file here and let's see which version I'm running. Probably an old one. Yeah, 6.2.1. That's pretty old. So let's let's update that. And I'll do npm install Cypress and do the latest. Wait, is this that a dev dependency? Yeah, it is. So slash capital D. That should update to the latest version. And uh, yeah, I see some people coming. Uh, hey, how are you, folks? Let me know what you would like to like to see today. I am planning on uh, trying to see what the new uh, Cypress version is about. I got two things I know of. Uh, there's the session, CY session uh, API, and I definitely want to try that out. And there's also some updates to the Cypress Studio, uh, which actually can give you assertions. So uh, we did Cypress Studio on this stream uh, a couple of months ago. And um, what we did there is basically recorded some actions, some clicks and types and stuff like that. Uh, it was really cool. I think it's a 
really nice uh, nice plugin or no, not not plugin addition to Cypress capabilities and I definitely think it's going to be pretty useful for people that are starting with test automation and uh, and and they want to learn about how the automation works and what it actually does when you point and click and record and do some actions and recently Cypress has added the capability not only to like record your actions but actually to give you uh, give you some assertions or some suggestions for for uh, assertions so I wonder how that works so we what I want to do today is to take a look at that and I'm not sure if it's probably it's still in experimental mode so that would be studio experimental studio true yeah so let me set that up seems we're l running the latest version so let's do npx cypress open and fire up that cypress hey retro bear nice to see you i'm finally doing stream it's been a couple of months already and uh, the, the situation has been quite difficult as uh, my baby kind of claimed the room I'm streaming from my bedroom where I sleep my wife and also the baby and baby didn't like me working here so I had to move out for any evening work and then of course uh, I got really busy <laughs> and <laughs> that didn't play well so it's been quiet on the blog and the streaming and on youtube and on everything but i am slowly coming back and there was also the thing that i was kind of tired so i took a little break uh so all right we got some tests over here let's let's do something let's uh i'm going to create a new file uh, I'm going to call that studio.ts and just create an empty test. Do I get the... I did have like a snippet thing but it doesn't seem to be suggesting now. Yeah, okay, I'll just type in myself test. And uh, let's create an empty test. And I'm just going to visit the base URL. So let's see that. And I'll open this. And let's see what the studio has, has prepared for us. Okay, so it is opening my app. Good, and where do I have the studio? I don't have it here. Why is it not here? I totally forgot how to turn on studio. I thought the Cypress JSON should be enough. Experimental studio true. So, oh yeah, here it is. Add commands to test. This is pretty much hidden. Okay, so let's add commands to test. Interact with your site to add test command commands right click to add assertions oh cool let's let's do that so i'll click on create the board so it got the selector it got the click i'll type in new board that seems to be working really well oh it even added the clear input they don't really have to do that but this is a nice addition because in some apps you probably might might need that and okay so let's do the right click oh cool so when when i right clicked on the field i got expect input to have value have class have attributes oh and it takes the class from like the actual dom and it checks the placeholder be visible be enabled not be checked wow wow this is this is really nice 
when I said that the studio has a great like a um, capability to to give knowledge to to like people that are just starting with test automation I think this is ramping it up to a new level right because if you remember when you were starting with any kind of test automation the first thing you would do of course is like to emulate yourself your testing um, so okay I want to create a board I want to do this action that action and then you realize there's kind of a lot happening uh, underneath and there are actually things you need to think about when creating a test automation and these are some great hints onto what is underneath so when starting you might not be even aware that okay there's a placeholder and that might be important so maybe that's something I need to test there's a class right so if there's an active class or something like that that might be nice to check and this should be visible etc that's uh, I like this okay so let's save that and what can I do I can add an assertion so whenever I click do the right click it's going to like take the element that I right clicked on and and it's going to like check uh, yeah provide some assertions on that element so what uh, if I click on the input it's going to uh, check whether I have the value etc oh and check this out this is something I actually show on uh, on workshops right so when I right click on this button I have an assertion it should have text my boards so that's a that's a good good assertion right there but what if you want to check this text right the new new board well until you look inside the DOM until you actually look uh, through the inspect element with your dev tools you might not even be aware that this is an input so when I right click with the studio it's not going to provide me the, the check of whether it has a text right uh, because input fields don't have text they have value or they can have an attribute like a placeholder or something like that uh, but uh, user sees a text but uh, what you need to test is the value so oh I, I clicked on the class so click on the have value new board so now I can save my commands and it will run my test and add some assertions so let me see the test how it looks because it has added to my test and now it seems like this is this is a good test I have a shoot command and uh, yeah it's doing its thing so I can maybe clear this up because I don't need these I can I can maybe change that so let's maybe type enter over here instead of clicking the save button uh, maybe that class is not that important so let's just check the title after we have created the test so now I save this and cool okay I, I have a test so it's not only an automation of the steps it's actually a test because I have some assertions let's uh, let's check out some some more things I want to I want to create a list a new list and I want to create a couple of tasks task one and task two let me see so I can add an assertion expect div to have text have class okay so it doesn't suggest uh, doesn't suggest uh, to like have an assertions that that there should be two tasks so it doesn't seem like to uh, yeah the suggestion is not there but what else can I test maybe let's look into the docs and uh, change back to Google 
What did I do? I just opened a new tab. Not sure what was happening. Whatever. Okay, let's let's look it into the docs and let's see. Let's see if there's anything any more info on the studio. By the way, you can search by clicking Command K if you're on Mac and probably some equivalent when you're on Windows. That's super cool. I love this. I was asking about this and they have implemented it, so I was so happy. I even thought they like they did it for me, but probably <laughs> probably they thought of it <laughs> uh, without me. Uh, but yeah, okay, studio, studio, Cypress Studio. Let's see. Extending a test. All right, real world example. Hmm, okay, maybe we can look into that as well. Uh, but what I want to see is what kind of assertions we can we can do. Because we have some okay, we have some actions that interact with the application. Are there assertions? Oh yeah, here they are. We can see them. Right clicking will enable the assertions. And blah blah blah. Commands are generated in commands log. Where the pay button? Okay, I just skimmed through this, so maybe I just skipped skipped over some part. I don't see anything more. It seems like uh, this is basically it, like the capability of what it can do. Save new test. Oh, I can. Yeah, I I noticed that you can uh, create a new test right from the right from the over here create new spec file so that's untitled spec let's create a file and will that trigger the studio probably or will it not Create a test with Cypress Studio. Oh, nice. All right, so that's like, this is, this is, this is something I would actually, you know, like when you first open Cypress, when you install that, it's going to like create your files for, uh, to get, to help you get started. I think this could be a great way to get started with Cypress. Okay, just go ahead and click something through and and oh yeah everything is saved inside this JS file so if you want to tweak it then go ahead and write uh, uh, and and make that test even better this is I think this this might be a great uh, onboarding experience but I'm sure they have like uh, their research backed up by by some someone else too. Uh, all right, Cypress Studio, well done. I I like it. I like it very much. Uh, okay, so let's let's move on to something else. I think this is this is pretty much pretty much it. I don't think there's too much else to explore. Oh, cool! I I never noticed this pop up with uh with the docs uh, i don't even use this very much but that might be just me and you get like uh these great suggestions on what you can what you can do best practices configuration api run tests faster oh run test faster in ci sure okay learn more it's probably like the Oh, okay, smart or orchestration, stuff like that. Basically talking about the dashboard service, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, all right. So let's let's move on to something else. Let's move on to the to the um, to the session API. I am very excited about that. 
and very curious about that, like what it can actually do. So session TS. Somewhere I saw a blog about this. I think it was Cypress.io slash blog. They have made a blog about this new feature. Authenticate faster in test with CY session command. There it is. So basically what it does uh, according to this block is so for example if you have this login uh, sequence where you would like open the login page and then type in your username and password and then you click on the login and and etc then instead of that uh, you only do this once but you wrap this sequence in this session command so see my session here it is and what you will do is what this will do is create this session and save all of the uh, data that is that is saved to your browser when you are logged in so whenever you log in log in something is saved into your browser and so that way the server knows that you are uh, who you are and whether that is cookies local storage session storage or something else i think this session api should be taking care of that solve the problem of caching restoring cookies local storage and session storage all right so that's that seems to be in line in line with what i'm saying so so yeah and uh, switching test with users okay so i wrap this and no that is true, true, true. makes your test more readable and because the yes, session cache is here then you won't let switching users okay so you can you you can log in your first user and then you log in with your other and that login method actually has that session inside so let me let me understand that so we need to okay we need to enable this experimental session support so let's let's do that and let's try to see let's try to see how we can use the use this in our app so whenever i am uh, logging in inside my app i just save cookies to my browser because that's like it's a simple app uh, it doesn't like use anything anything complicated if you have the right cookie you are authenticated if you don't then you're not so it uh, uses session let me show you let me show you the login how that works so let's tap cy visit whoops and okay and let's open this up session Okay, because experimental session is enabled. Wait, hey, what was that? That was some interesting message. Hey, let me let me see that. I didn't catch that. Cypress navigates the default blank page before each test to ensure test reliability. Oh, that is interesting. Because I just read blog by Gleb Pamuto about like doing this visiting blank page before each test to ensure the test reliability and that was that was pretty interesting hack that I didn't realize uh, could be could be useful uh, and uh, yeah basically it helped me make some of my tests more stable 
because uh, okay I'm not going to get into that but uh, yeah so it's interesting to know like that experimental session will do that for you so let's see let's let's do a login I do have a login somewhere over here so how about I do the login login sign up here I do have like sign up over here. Sign up without welcome email. Let's do this. All right. Let's do the sign up. So I'll just copy this from another test and I'll do this. And basically, I make a sign up. Good. All right. User is logged in. So I did my sequence over here. So let's. How about we wrap this? Should I wrap this inside the custom command? Okay. Let's quickly do that. Let's let's create a new command. So Cypress Cypress commands commands add. And uh, let's call that sign up. Although I'm not sure if I should do the sign up. Uh, let's actually let's actually do the login. I did sign up, so let's let's log in this user. I'm going to yeah, I'm going to comment this out right now. And let's actually do the login. So t -t 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 sign up existing user. That should be probably login existing user. So I do have like a sign up API command that is going to do the sign up and then I do the login. But let's let's do this over here. So let's I'm actually going to delete this remember the password and let's do the cypress commands add login let's let's go exactly as it was described in the block so I'll do this and um, so instead of this I'm going to type email and instead of What's this? This is something extra. So let's do the password. And instead of this, I'm going to type password. Password. So what I need to do is to pass the email and password. And somehow I now need to wrap this inside the session API. So let me let me go back to the block. Do I have it here? No. Docs. No, it wasn't docs. It was it was block Cypress. Dot com. No, dot io. Sorry. Slash block. So let's see what was the API. Da da da. It actually had the assertion, so I guess I need to wait for that redirect to happen uh, just to make sure that all of the cookies and everything is stored as as needed. All right, so it would be something like this session. Okay, so I get I pass this username to the to the session API. So let's let's see how that will turn out. So let's do the username and and wrap this whole thing inside the session and let's actually add that last assertion so the URL uh, should equal should equal to slash right is that right contain Let's do contain. No, that's that's no good. Equal. I think equal is better. Well, what are we doing here in the login? 
location path name. Yeah, let's do that. Location path name. So now I'm basically using this session. So let's let's do that. Let's just do visit and do the login. Just to make sure I don't have a login custom command, do I? Mm, doesn't seem so. All right. So it uses session. I have my custom command over here. Let's save that. Let's see what happens. Okay, this is a blank page. We always navigate here after CY session to continue our test, follow up with visit. Oh, all right. So I guess I need to. I guess I need to do this in this order. Oh, I didn't pass the. Yeah, I didn't pass the arguments. So that would be. First was email, right? And the second was the password. So everything is super safe. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, I need to. Yeah, all right. I forgot to use the visit over here. So let's try again. Hmm. All right. So I did the clear page, clear page. I did a login, so I see the login happening, and now I visit, but I don't see the. I don't see myself logged in, because if I were logged in, I would see. The thing I would see is. is the is my email over here and I don't see that but maybe I closed the custom command too soon because I make the assertion on path name and but it doesn't I don't have like a login slash login URL so there is no redirect so I need to do this differently and inside the login test what I actually do is not only check the path name but I uh, but I checked the, the cookie and and yeah so let's let's try that let's try this instead so the Trello token should exist after I log in so let's see what happens here Mm, okay, null is expected to exist. I am logged in, but yeah, the get cookie doesn't have it doesn't have the the that's not something that is retried. So yeah, let's do it uh, somewhat differently. The login module should not be visible. Yeah, okay, let's let's do this. That's kind of hacky thing. So what I'm asserting here is that the login module deal like the modal window is disappears, then the path name is equal to the slash, so it goes to the home page, and the Trello token, which is the name of the cookie, uh, is going to exist. So let's let's try it now again. Okay. Okay. So now it seems that it has worked but I don't see how this is okay so the confusing part here is that I'm doing the login through UI which I guess is okay but the problematic part with logging in is that everything gets deleted between different uh, between different uh, it blocks between different it uh, between different tests, but I am staying inside the same test 
basically what I'm doing, I'm doing the login and then I'm visiting my page again, which is okay, but <laughs> this doesn't make sense to me. So like, what's the, okay, I want to, okay, so I can switch user in test. So like, this is the useful part, right? So if I, you don't need to log out here. I can just log in with different user and then visit my page. And I don't need to be logged out. Active session is completely cleared and restored. Switching between users in a test can behave more like multiple users using different browsers. Hmm, okay. But but what now? Uh, this is, hmm. I, I understand I can switch between users, but uh, how is that, how is that different? Like, okay, I can, all right, I can, I don't need to log out. I just can like use the session, right? And when I use that, I can, yeah, I can have multiple users within the same test. Not sure if I would design my test like this. If I had like different users and like, why would I use them? I would probably, they probably have different privileges, right? So the point of that would be if they have different privileges, then basically I would divide them into different tests because I don't want to mix those, those two tests. Like I don't, a, a situation doesn't come up to my mind where I would want to keep two different users with two different privileges inside the same test. Unless there's some kind of relation between them, but still, I, I think I would try to divide that. So, all right, so let's, let's create another user. Let's, I'm going to create another user and I'm going to call this example.com. Oops. Dot com. And let's log out. Create this user. Oops. Do it at example.com. Cool. I'm signed up. Now I log out and and what will I do? Uh, I will okay log in with the first user then visit my page log in with the second user and then visit my page. I'm struggling with the with the like usefulness of this. I don't find the a burlor when you test permissions, for example. Yeah, I, I I guess I I guess that makes sense. Like that's that's the case where you would want to test different users. But I wonder if I can like load the the session in a different test. But that doesn't seem to. Hmm. Again, I'm, I'm using UI for this. So the only difference <laughs> between, the, the only difference I see is that I don't have to log out. But inside this application, like this would be super simple to kind of log out because I would just delete the cookie and then essentially I would be logged out. Although, yeah, my front end would probably not notice until I do some action. So, mm, yeah, okay. But yeah, okay, so I can authenticate faster because I don't need to log out. I wonder, I wonder if I can, if I can uh, like load this. This would be super interesting if I could for example, like do this once, like log in 
once and then use that session whenever I uh, whenever like inside the whole test suite and I thought this is exactly that like that that was the impression I got from like the general idea of the session uh, session API and uh, and I struggled to find that because because what I'm doing inside the session is I'm going through UI so I would imagine like okay so this is like a wrapping this session is going to store all of the essential data that I need and is and is going to do like a snapshot and I can load that whenever I want and like um, if I had multiple tests over here then I could just use that and uh, have like four or five tests and have test one three and five use user number one and you, you have test number two and four use you user number two but without actual need to be going through the uh, clicking and everything it would just like insert a snapshot inside the browser and I would be magically logged in um, that's what I thought it is and it seems like I'm mistaken about this let me yeah let me sure sure to check out docs on session so let's let's check that out let's see if there's uh, there are some more examples on this uh, dun -dun -dun, caching session via API that's that's nice that's something I, I thought about but then like I'm using that manually and use that session okay when can I when can I use the session can I like load the session because like for now I'm basically just using the custom commands to log myself in and then wrapping that inside the session it doesn't seem to be too different from from yeah doesn't seem to be too different so let's session validation okay validate okay I can validate myself not sure what this is session validation just using the request so before okay I do this after I just wrap it inside this with the session validation I'm also and what's this this is like the this where is this function defined oh it seems like this is like uh, an argument of this log validate okay validate is newly created restored session the validate function is run immediately after the session setup runs and also every time session restores restores a cached session that's that's the thing I'm looking for that's that's the missing part what's that what about define users in data and then use that in the loop yeah that that's yeah that's something that's something that could be useful like okay I have 10 users I create 10 sessions and then just insert them inside the test and just switch to the users and I th think this is it I think this is it but I just don't see like the, the the use case I don't I don't see this blog explaining it very well although I am I'm sorry to the author of the blog I am just skimming through that <laughs> I just don't want to read that word by word so maybe it is mentioned somewhere I'm just looking at these code examples uh, but this code example like it doesn't seem to uh, it doesn't give me the impression that I can do that but it seems like this is yeah okay we can cache those sessions and we can load them somehow so I want to I want to see how can I load that session so I just go through UI once and and uh, yeah and then I just load that so where can I load the session so before after we've seen that validate asserting the 
session in the setup. Oops, sorry. It's best practice to assert that the login process is completed. Yeah, then uh, this would be like the completed conditional is caching a session. CY session name login else login. Ooh, this is something. Okay. Okay. Switching sessions inside test. Mm -hmm. So here I have just a function and I'm switching one session, another session. Validating the session. Here I have, okay, I make an API request to validate that the session is correct. Or just return false if the session is invalid. Okay, modifying session before caching. All right, let me maybe, let me maybe check where to call the visits. Before each login. Okay, so this is interesting. So it seems like um, this is calling the user before each uh, and and what I'm doing here, so let's comment this out and let's create another it block. It uses the created session again. So my intuition tells me that if I now call the login and visit is not going to go through the UI again. It's just going to use that cached session. If yeah, if my intuition is correct, that is what's going to happen. Yeah, there it is. All right. Restore safe. How could I have missed that? <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, I understand that now. So and I do have these sessions over here. All right, so once I run the around around once I have ran this once, yeah, this is this is it. All right, once I have ran this once, then uh, I get to you know, restore that session, and and I can okay. So let's it creates sessions. And how about we do this first one, second one? Do I need, even need to do the visit? And that would be example dot com uh, uses the example session, and this is going to be using the it's session. Okay, so now I uh, have essentially three tests. One test where I create that session and then I have another test which is going to use the first session and the second is going to use the second session. So let's see that. It creates the session and yeah, I visit it the first one and I have the example.com and inside the first test uh, or the second test rather there I would have my affiliate read session all right so this is how you use that uh, okay and so if I if I decided to skip this and just run my first and second test what did it do? Oh, it has the session cached already. So when does it get deleted? I can see the button. 
So let's see, what if I close the browser, stop this, oops, stop this and run my test again. What is it going to do? It is going to go through that login, all right. So yeah, so first it needs to like create a cache. So that's that's uh, important. But if I run my test again, it's just going to be logged in as the first user and as the second user. That is cool. All right. So what if I what if I decide to run multiple tests? So let's do session TS and let's just copy this and do the session, oops, session two. Session two. And the session two is not going to have the Cypress command. It's going to have, uh, not going to create those sessions. That's going to happen just in the first one session oh i got mixed i i mixed it up so there's session and session two so let's just let's just run those two tests so let's session why don't i have the session two ts over here Hey, are you sleeping? What's happening? Session two. I should have my test over here. Okay, now the code is getting messy. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, okay. I need to need to put this somewhere else. Let's put the custom command inside the support folder, inside the index. Good. Session two. Is over here. Seems like I need to restart Cypress. Client disconnected. Okay, I probably messed something up. I closed the browser too soon or something like that. So let's see. Let's see what happens if I have two files. I wonder what it is going to do. Uh, if it's going to uh, keep the session between the spec files, or you need to like. Uh, have the session created for each file at least. So my intuition, because I know when <laughs> Cypress team does something, they usually do that pretty well. My intuition would be that they are actually going to keep the session in between spec files because that would be like super cool. So you have thousands of spec files, you only do the login once and then you use those sessions for for everything. So let's run two files and I'm not sure this is run integration specs together. I think this thing in the in the uh, GUI mode is actually going to like snap those two files into one giant file. So it's it's slightly different than running them running them in the headless mode. So, okay, we see the session being created. Session two is being created. And now this is skipped and voila. Okay, it did, did the thing, right? So we got two files and the, the, the second file is using the session from the first file. But of course, this might be slightly different as, as we are like snapping those two files together when we, when we do this. So how about we run this headlessly and oof, how do I npx cypress run and I want to like run the spec headless. Oh, let's do the headed mode so we can see that browser we're not going to change and let's do the integration. How about we do session star ts? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to work, probably not. 
Let's try that anyway. Oof. Spec space separated lists. This will not, this will work, but it's not recommended. Not sure what I done that's separate complaining about. Okay, let's see if it just runs those tests. Oh, it opened in the second wi window. So let's, let's look into that. Okay, so now we're running first file and it's creating those sessions going through the UI. Now it will close, open another window. And what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to do that again. All right, so you can see it's it's logging through UI again. So it seems like it doesn't it doesn't work that way. So whenever whenever a session is created, it is kept uh, only within that spec file. So it's not it's not like cached throughout the whole whole test run which i guess i don't know like intuitively it feels kind of like a bummer uh i, I want to just create the user once log in once and, and use it all over the place but it doesn't seem maybe there's like technical limitation or something i don't know uh but yeah, these are sessions. I think like, even though this is a pretty cool feature, right? Uh, it seems like it caches everything and you're just logged in. It, it would be interesting to, to test this out on different types of, of log, uh, of login methods, because I like, this is, this is something I made. I'm not. I wouldn't call myself like a developer if I, if someone would want for me to create uh, an app with authentication that would probably get hacked pretty soon, uh, probably. <laughs> but for for uh, application like this where it just has a cookie, it seems it is working pretty well. Uh, it might be different for different applications, but it seems like this is exactly what it tries to to do like just log in once in the file and then use that whenever you want and exactly uh, as been said in chat it is it is going to be useful for testing out different permissions right you create multiple uh multiple different users and and i guess now the example from the block actually makes more sense uh, you just visit the application, log in, uh, yeah, log in once and then just try different users and see different permissions and see how the application behaves. Uh, I think, yeah, that might speed things up. Uh, and I wonder if there's any way of how you can mm, basically have those sessions stored and keep them throughout the whole test suite because that's I think could make it even faster and uh, and maybe I just missed that I'm definitely going to dig inside the documentation and read more on this I just wanted to like explore this with you and uh, and see what it is all about so I guess uh, we got an hour we can wrap this up and yeah thanks for coming this has been fun so I hope to uh, do this more often. Uh, I'm definitely going to do this whenever Cyprus is going to release something uh, exciting. They definitely did while I was not streaming. Uh, one thing uh, uh, definitely de deserves a mention is the component testing. So maybe next time I'm going to dig into that. But I do have to have an app that actually uses components. And I'm working on that and I'm working on thousand different other things besides my <laughs> my day job so um so yeah let's uh let's see hey Mati, hi we're just wrapping up 
<laughs> but uh, yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for thanks for coming, and um, I guess I see you next time. Uh, I'm excited about about uh, uh, about exploring some more stuff with you. See you on Discord. See you on the blog, and and yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.